Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and today we're doing a stereo install on this GMC Sierra Trek. Uh, in this install, we're going to show you how to remove the factory radio and it reinstall a touchscreen Pioneer radio in this place. Now, to get things started here, to get this factory radio out, we've done a similar install in the past here on the channel, in case you want to check that out. What we're going to do in this install, first and foremost, is get this old radio out. It's outdated, some of the buttons don't work, and it's ready for a refresh. It's a pretty simple um, removal. We need to remove this bezel up and around the radio, this off-color um, bezel here. And once we do so, we can remove the... Um, power sockets, HVAC controls, and then eventually, finally, the radio will come out last. So I'd like to use a panel tool to kind of get started here. Now you can use a panel tool or sometimes it's super tough to get back behind here. Now sometimes just to get it started, you may need a little flat head, something with a little bit more of a finer, um, finer edge just to get back behind there. And once you do, you can your other panel tool and slowly there's a ton of clips Whew. it was on there tight eight clips across each side and one center clip in the middle take your time that would be an awful bezel to break okay next thing here these are generally seven millimeter bolts. Go ahead and remove, starting from the bottom. Okay, go ahead and disconnect the harnesses back there. All right, there we are. A little dusty here. This is uh, seen better days. So, with our main harnesses all disconnected, what we're gonna do at this point is head back to the bench and begin assembling our new wiring harness, dash kit for the radio, and uh, get everything prepped to be reinstalled in the factory location. This video is sponsored by Crux Interfacing Solutions, an excellent location for radio replacements, camera interfaces, and more. Check out cruxinterfacing.com to start planning your next install today. All right, so as we get started here, some of the parts that we're going to need. First and foremost, we, uh, we're doing just a basic Pioneer touchscreen radio replacement. It has Bluetooth and backup camera functionality. Um, the dash kit that we're going with is this Metro 95-3305 for double dins. To maintain most of our factory functions here, uh, we're going with this Crux uh, integration wiring harness kit for 2006 up. It's the S00GM-16 interface. Fits multiple makes and models depending on what GM vehicle that you're using this for. Nice thing is this retains both OnStar, Bose, non-Bose, um, just about everything except for um, if you have the factory navigation. We're going to need a harness adapter. We're using the um, Metro 40-CR10 harness adapter. And then finally here, for accessibility for Oxen USB, we're using this um, Oxen USB flush mount adapter. We'll post down in the description the part number in case you want to pick one of these up as well. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the wiring harness out of our Pioneer box. And we're going to go ahead and pull this apart. Then what we're going to do at that point is strip wires from both ends and begin soldering up color for color. Okay, so what we've done at this point is strip the ends of our Crux harness and strip the ends of our Pioneer harness. What we're gonna do is almost literally match color for color across the board. If you're unsure what colors go where, your Crux diagram here in the provided instructions provides that information. So match up most color for color here and uh, what we're going to do is get them twisted on here we're going to solder up our connections and then you as you may have noticed we have our heat shrink already on so once our connection's cool we can move the heat shrink up and over that soldered connection and use a heat gun to shrink down the tubes so it's nice and insulated so 
Let's go ahead and get started. So we have a nice and hot soldering iron here. What we're gonna do is just get that right up back behind. Solder up those connections just like so. And once that cools, like I said, we'll move the heat shrink up and over that soldered connection. So we're gonna do that and continue on through each and every single wire here. In addition to these wires up and over here as well, just to ensure that all connections are made and uh, then we can button up the harness. Okay, so we went ahead and got all our connections soldered, literally color for color. The only ones to keep in mind with the crux side of it is typically your parking brake wire is light green, but on the crux it's yellow black. And then your backup camera wire typically is on the Pioneer, it's uh, purple white, but on the crux it is a red white wire. Other than that, it's pretty much color for color. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and grab our heat shrink and pull it up and over our connections here. Uh, we're gonna do that for all the wires here and then we'll take our heat gun and shrink the tubes. Okay, so at this point, our harness has cooled after we've soldered all our connections here. Uh, we just added an extra power and ground lead off the accessory and ground wire because we had added other things down the road. And since we didn't use the blue-white um, turn-on wire, um, since our module provides that for the Bose amp anyways, we kept it out, stripped it, put a butt connector on it, and we'll leave it out after we, we wrap up a harness in case we had an aftermarket amplifier down the road. So, using some tested tape, this just looks more professional and protects the wiring. We're going to go ahead and wrap our harness, make sure it's all buttoned up and cleaned up, and then uh, our wiring harness is good to go. Then after that, we can worry about assembling the dash kit. So at this point, we got our wiring harness all prettied up, ready to go. Uh, this end goes into the WR input on the back of the radio. For steering wheel controls, that's our main harness here. We have it plugged in on the Bose side because our truck has a factor in Bose. And this end plugs into the factory harnesses there. Um, we try to make it look as factory and clean as possible um, while uh, reducing as much space taken up back behind the radio as possible as well. It'll be a tight fit. So, harness is all good to go. Let's go ahead and turn our time over to the radio and get the dash kit prepped, assembled, and head back to the truck to get this all reinstalled. Okay, so we went ahead and got the dash kit up on the radio. Nice and even, everything looks good there. So we can set this off to the side. Pretty straightforward kit to assemble. Now, finally here, depending if you have the factory USB in the glove box or not, what we're gonna do is a little, little modification here. Now what we have is a flush mount adapter for aux and USB, and this is USB 3.0 with an aux jack. And all they do, um, these are designed to do, is plug into the aux and USB on the back of the radio, relocating these inputs to a more convenient location. Now, fortunately, there is quite a few power sockets in this vehicle, so if we lose one, it's not a huge deal. What we're gonna actually end up doing is just popping one of these out and replacing it with this in its place because it fits right in that same location. There's a little nut that goes on the back and we can route the wire to plug into the back of the radio. Now, with the factory USB that's in the glove box, we're gonna just reallocate that and use these power socket here and um, instead turn it into a charging only port. We'll have more reliability out of this USB slot versus the factory one in the glove box. So that's the game plan at this point. We're gonna go ahead and pop out this socket and install our flush mount in its place. Okay, there we go. We just need to tighten this up just a little bit more, make sure it's all centered. Got the nut on the back, and uh, it'll be a nice aux USB modification to this little bezel here uh, that allows us to easily connect into those inputs on the back of the radio. And it looks like it came from the factory. Okay, so what we've done here is we've plugged our harness adapter into the factory plugs. And that goes in nice and easy there. Um, our antenna adapter 
plugs in just like it should as well. And now I'll post in the description this USB adapter. And now if you don't want to do the mod like we're doing with the uh, flush mount adapter, you can actually just plug this USB directly into the USB input on the back of the radio to retain the USB that's inside the, the center glove box there. What we've done here, since we're doing that mod and had this power socket now laying around, is we plugged it back in through a um, USB charger in there and plugged our adapter into it. So now what we've done is we've converted the center um, glove box USB input inside of this as a charge port, which is kind of cool. So we can now tuck this away and uh, still utilize that USB, but have the aux and USB on the front of the um, dash bezel, our mod there, as more of a convenience to plug into the radio. So we're not losing any of the factory functionality. Super cool. So we'll show you that functionality once we get this all buttoned up. Um, now there's, there's quite a bit of space off to the side here in the back of the radio. This adapter needs to be slid all the way back in there and uh, just leave enough out where we can plug this into the back of our new radio. So we're going to go ahead and do that, try to get as much back in there and leave as much space for the radio as possible so everything fits. Okay, so we got everything ready to go. We have our radio here, so we went ahead and plugged in the main harness for the radio. We have our backup camera, which we did in a separate video. Um, got that all hooked up as well. We need to grab our WR for steering wheel controls. Plug that on in. We also have an antenna adapter. Make sure we plug that on in. Now we have our aux and USB little mod here. So we're gonna get that hooked up as well. We have a Bluetooth mic, which we also ran. Get that hooked up as well. A lot, of, a lot of connections, so we'll go ahead and tuck our kind of the brain box and everything and down in there as well as we can. Not too bad of a fit. Okay, before we go any further, let's go ahead and test everything. Chimes are working good. So, everything seems to be working good. We'll use our volume up. Volume down works good. All right, cool. Everything seems to be functioning just as we planned here. So let's go ahead and reinstall the bottom two portion. All right, everything looks really good. Um, that aux USB mod looks great. Um, we kept the USB in the glove box functional as just a charging port. Uh, we still have a whole nother charging port here as well. So at this point, um, install is good to go. If you have any questions about what we did here, just go ahead and po uh, post a comment below. Thanks guys for watching the channel, appreciate the support, and we will see you in the next video.